Hello, my soccer universe. Well, given the news of Kobe Bryant's passing and the fact that he was not only a soccer fan but also a Milan fan, I decided to put this little tribute at the beginning of the video. Um, I think I don't need to say more. I think that many people say a lot more things about his passing and the circumstances around it. I'm wearing for a second time in a row the Napoli jersey and I've been actually wearing this all day so I decided for to shoot this video first of my I want to make now shorter chunks of roundup videos uh, so I'm gonna do today uh, a Serie A and La Liga you get of course also a what to watch video and then we'll do uh, the other leagues tomorrow and uh, let's see where, where this goes of course in my what to watch for this weekend I completely missed the fact that FA Cup is playing instead of Premier League but I'll want it later let's talk Serie A the weekend started wonderfully from my point of view and also from Kobe's point of view uh, with Milan winning 1-0 at Brescia but if you saw that game I honestly have to tell you this was one of those <laughs> where you don't know how you got the win. Um, Milan started well, but then there was a uh, was a period, you know, had some minor... It was not a very open... It was an interesting game, an intense game, but it was lots of mistakes and not very um, good overall. Um, however, it took pressure about 20, 20, 20 minutes that they actually got a little bit more dangerous and played over the sides and uh, caused Milan all kinds of troubles, uh, especially Torre Grossa, I have to say. Uh, and yeah, I felt this is a this is much tighter than I'm comfortable with, to be honest. Um, and then just before I have Ibrahimovic misses a sitter. I mean, he is free in front of him at all. He just has to put the foot differently. It's one nil Milan. At that point, Milan had a little bit cut back control, but just a teeny bit. All changed in the second half. Um, I have to say, Brescia in the first 20, 20 minutes of the second half completely would have deserved to take the lead. I think they took the lead, but it was chalked off uh, because of offside, so a little bit luck there too. But uh, I really cannot tell you how much I thought that Milan is going to lose this game. I was even telling, uh, I was even telling my wife, this game is making me crazy. Milan is going to lose this one, and I felt gutted because this is actually one of those wins that you have to get because it's the last place team, even if you're away from home, and even if they are, you know, they're not really rivals because the fans actually like each other. But yeah. Leao uh, comes off, Rebic comes on, Krunic uh, comes on for Chalanoglu a little bit later. Um, you know, all kind of things that... Uh, small adjustments. But uh, when Rebic came on, the game shifted back a little bit towards Milan's uh, way. Uh, and then suddenly they get the goal again through Rebic with one good attack and you know you 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 can see he's looking again how can I find find a position the ball falls in front of his legs and he puts it home uh he scores three goals in two games now and yeah Milan is thanks to him back on track then they made kind of you know try to keep the ball away they had some chances to maybe make it even two but honestly overall pressure would have deserved a point out of this one so uh, I gotta be honest, I'm happy with the win. Uh, also nice to see the black jersey suddenly a little bit popping up more often. Um, I actually think it was a good idea for Milan to play in black because I thought, yeah, you could play in red and black, but then with black pants and then rather play in the whole black kit, honestly. Saturday didn't see much and I have to say a little bit unfortunately I saw that Spal uh, was losing at home to Bologna 3-1 and I was thinking about Fiorentina and Genoa but ultimately decided to watch some Bundesliga highlights 0-0 uh, that's how the last game of uh, last season was also 0-0 and that is what scared me off and seemingly I was alright I didn't see any highlights I was briefly thinking about watching Torino Atalanta uh, and when I switched over to watch it halftime, it was 3-0, and then I didn't. Uh, a little bit later, I saw it's 5-0. Didn't see really what was ha ha happening. I was completely flabbergasted. It was 7-0 for Atalanta. Atalanta is free-flowing. Absolutely. I mean, it seems like um, 
either they get caught up or someone is giving them a little bit contra, but if they get rolling, they roll over the opposition. 5-0 uh, Milan, 5-0 Parma, then 1-2 to Spal, 7-0 Torino. It's unbelievable. And Torino actually was in good form. They had, I think, three wins to start the year. So absolutely crazy. Ilicic, Gosens, and um, a penalty by Zapata make it clear for, uh, in the first half. And then within a minute, 53rd and 54th, Ilicic adds two more. If you haven't seen this, the goal, uh, the 4-0, uh, it was a free kick given at the center line, and he very quickly takes the free kick from the center line, puts it into net because he saw the goalkeeper far out. A uh, miracle shot, of course. Um, Papu Gomez is cleaning his boots after that one. Uh, he makes it shortly after one. Again, assist from Papu Gomez. Uh, the 5-0. Muriel comes on and adds also in the 86th and 88th. Two more absolute utter destruction of Torino and I think Atalanta. I said it today at work because no one, uh, you know, Atalanta is not on your uh, sc radar screen here. And I said, you really, 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 really should watch Atalanta if you can. I should really, really, really should have watched Inter Cagliari, but we had my birth, my daughter's birthday party in the first one. The next one is uh, uh, next Sunday, so probably won't see much there either. Inter Cagliari. Uh, it was a game that Inter had more or less in the bag. Uh, Lautaro Martinez gets uh, an early goal to make it 1-0. No, early 20, 20, 20, 29th minute. But, you know, Cagliari kind of tries to find their full foot again. They started so brightly and now it's kind of going in the opposite direction. Nainggolan, it was deflected, gets the equalizer at a point where I think Inter should have made it two already and then almost gave up that uh, singular point and you could see the frustration of Inter's players, the third draw looming um, in a row. And Lautaro Martinez completely lost his plot at the end where uh, he has a he thinks he's fouled, the referee waves on, he goes at the referee, gets a yellow, cannot calm down, and I have to say this is absolutely his fault. Uh, gets a second uh, yellow, or, or gets a straight red and sent off, potentially even misses the derby. Now it, it depends on the report, uh, if he's out two matches, he will miss the derby. Um, the other thing that was infuriating to, to me, and I saw this already at the Bayern game, now all the big clubs, because we have so many fans in China, we need to put up uh, some Chinese messages to we wish you a happy new year and so on and so on. And if it was genuine, I would be okay, but everyone is doing it and everyone is selling these jerseys and everyone wants to make money. This is just a money move. And Inter yesterday was wearing even Chinese lettering on the back. This is not cool to me. This is absolutely not cool. Don't how 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 to say I always feel this is a game that's played in Europe. I welcome any outside fans, but you have to come here. Don't cater to them, especially with the pretense of making money. This drives me nuts. Now, of course, they will auction off those jerseys. Uh, you was doing the same. Milan is doing the same. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. This um. Bending over backwards, back backwards, especially for uh, Asian money. It's just we need money and we do everything about it. There's no ulterior mold, mold there. It's actually uh, dishonest to the Asian slash Chinese fans, but it's also dishonest, I think, to European fans who are still the core base. And I'm saying this as a Milan fan that has never been in the Merza uh, stadium. But I follow Milan. I'm not as much of a fan, or you know, I don't feel because I'm not from Milan. So there, there is, there's an additional one. But I'm at least an outside fan. But I wouldn't expect them to, uh, for any Austrian hall, holiday, that they suddenly have something there. And the same goes for there. Um, <clears throat> dress me nuts. On, 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 honestly, just bending over backwards by all the big clubs in Europe. The smaller ones don't even do it, the big ones do it. Parma Udinese saw a little bit. Udinese was quite pressing to get a goal. Even got a goal that was ru ruled out, but they lose 2-0. In a kind of monochromatic match. Sampdoria Sassuolo is goalless. Hellas gets another win and actually moves very much into the middle of the table. 3-0 over Lecce. And then the Derby della Capitale. I cleared my schedule. This is a must-watch. Um, and when you saw the Tifos, there was the Roma one, which, yeah, you know... 
the Olympico is not that great for Tifos to to be honest, but you know with the uh, flags and then they had a big Roma logo there, that looked fine. But what Lazio fans did, that knocked it out of the park. This is probably my favorite Tifo of the season so so far, with the um, from the Sistine Chapel, the painting where God touches Adam. Wonderful choreography, absolutely wonderful Tifo. The game didn't live up to it, especially Lazio did not show up. Uh, Roma actually dominated the game for most of the time, uh, played quite well, just sometimes lacking penetration, sometimes luck. Lazio was lucky. Roma got the lead through Jacko, I think it was in the 24th minute. Uh, goalkeeping mistake, Strakosha doesn't need to come out, the ball goes off the head of Jacko in, uh, was in 20, 20 26, uh, after a long ball from Cristante. That looked already weird, but then what the equalizer through a Cherby, a corner kick in, uh, the ball falls towards the white post and Paul Lopez, like a volleyball move, fists it up. Uh, the ball falls down, then there is Smalling, and again Paul Lopez it gets against the crossbar and falls a Cherby in front to the feet and he puts it in. <sighs> and uh, it's a goal. At first he could, he could, I, I think a Cherby just, just, just put it in in case it's given, and then he saw it's given. 1-1, one, one, Roma should have found the winner. I think there was one good chance uh, late, late in game for Lazio. Uh, but honestly, this was all Roma and drop points for Roma. And Lazio's win streak and They already lost to uh, Napoli. And I thought this might actually be a little bit of wrench uh, in, their, in their motor. Um, now Roma... Uh, but again, it's a derby, so yeah, the next three games are a little bit easier. Let's see how this will go. But now let's see the, 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 the situation before the big clash between Napoli and Juve. Inter dropped again points. Lazio did not win. Roma, of course, also did not win. So everyone chasing Juve did not win. With a win, Juve can sail away. However, there was Napoli. And this was an emotional game. This was Sarri's return as a Juve coach, or the first time returning since he has been Napoli coach. Um, it was again uh, Iguain, although that uh, ran the course. So, I mean, people really riled up. There were more visitors to that game than there were for the game between Napoli and Liverpool in the Champions League. I think that speaks already vol vol on the importance of the game. And I have to say, Gattuso probably used the result already against Lazio, which was admittedly a little, a little bit lucky, to really rattle the troops, rile them up, and had a game plan that you were actually did not have, although you were was playing the big three in front. You were lacked creativity and was stifled by Napoli, and Napoli could really nicely play forward and should have taking the lead in the first half. They were the better team or already in the first half. But the goal came then through Zier Zielinski. Uh, was a, more or less a tap-in because the ball was falling to him. About 1-0 and fully deserved. Juve then tries to come back. But honestly, I always had the feeling that Napoli is going to play. He plays home and when Insigne with a wonderful shot that was deflected by the Licht, has to be said. Uh, went to the heel. Otherwise, I think uh, it might have been saved. Makes it to nil, everything seemed safe, except that Ronaldo continues his scoring streak and makes a goal in the 90th, but Napoli can hang on, although they had a, two really stupid attempts at wasting time. But in the end, they hang on, and when just when they thought that, that this is a round that's going all for Juve, Juve actually has the biggest blunder. So if you look at the table, all the top four teams did not win. And what's even crazy that Inter, Lazio and Roma make a points towards Juventus. So Juve has only a three-point lead now. Uh, Lazio with a game in hand uh, can, of course, leapfrog past uh, Inter. But that game is now against Verona, which seemed not as of a iffy match matchup than it does seem now, because Verona is really in good form. Uh, so we have to see about that. Uh, Roma can stay a point ahead of Atalanta, but Atalanta comes and knocking then. Cali Parma Mil uh, in there for European spots. Maybe Hellas, maybe Napoli. I don't think Bologna and Torino. Um, I think they have looked. They have to rather look a little bit down. Um, Fiorentina 
Yeah, I I really hope, I really wish that Fia Fiorentina would move up, but it doesn't look good for them as well. Um, Udine Sassuolo down there and then Sabdoria, there is a cushion. I think it's Lecce moved with the win out of the relegation zone. Oh no, they were already out of the uh, re relegation zone. Did they actually win? Uh, I'm, no, they lost actually. I'm, I'm losing my plot myself. Uh, Spal 15, Genoa 15, Brescia 15. It's very tight. Lecce, Spal, Genoa, Brescia. Only one of those will survive. Maybe Sampdoria is moving out of it. So let's see. Well, this was my roundup of Serie A. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more videos like this, please drop a comment. If you watch Serie A, what you think, thought about the games. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.